is but love and therefore so am I. God is but love and therefore so am I. In my defenselessness, my safety lies. In my defenselessness, my safety lies. God is but love, and therefore so am I. God is but love, and therefore so am I. I am among the ministers of God. I am among of God. God is but love, and therefore so am I. God is but love, and therefore so am I. God is but love, and therefore so am I. Well, thank you all so much for joining me today and studying The Course in Miracles here on Summer Solstice. I'm Miracle Willie, forgiveness teacher from the Ozarks. We're, we're doing review number five, lesson 172, which is a review of lesson 153 and 154 in our workbook for students. From the, uh, we're reading from the edition printed by the Foundation for Inner Peace here on Thursday, June the 20th of 2024. And we are, uh, let's let the end. Basically, we've, we've done our lesson, the song. God is but love, and therefore so am I. We're supposed to hang out with that idea every morning and every evening for a minimum of five minutes. And he says 10 or 15 would be better, and 30 minutes if you find that it's easy and you find that your thoughts are settled down and you can spend longer, do so. <laughs> and then at, throughout the day, every hour of the day, bring yourself to the remembrance of this idea along with the two reviews. And those two reviews are supposed to be sandwiched in with this idea, God is but love and therefore so am I, and will help to bring more, um, more nuance to the concept, God is but love, therefore therefore so am I. You know, if God's created, if God created you in his or her, its <laughs> image as love, well then you're a love being too. So a couple of those nuances. One, lesson 151. All, uh, excuse me, in my defense, uh, I said 151, I meant 153 and 154. In my defenselessness, my safety lies. In my defenselessness, my safety lies. It's one of those ideas that if God is but love, therefore so am I. In my defenselessness, basically, you know, tune in with the idea that you, you attack is not something that you're going to use. It's never needed. And it, it's, it's only for the illusion, illusory world that attack appears to work anyway. And we're trying to be freed from that. And, you know, we have a really good teacher uh, I'm not. I'm referring to Jesus too, but I'm thinking right now of uh, the Dalai Lama, the Tibetan Buddhist, that they don't have a military. And when the when the um, aggressors came and and took over their country, um, he fled. You know, he he didn't want to fight. They didn't even have a military because they were a peaceful culture. Now, we need to all stand with that peaceful culture. We don't need to fight for it. That's how we lose our freedoms. But we should stand with them. So we want to take a stand for, um, for nonviolence, for, for peace, for people to be able to, uh, to, to express themselves freely without defense, without... Um, and anyway, the Dalai Lama demonstrated that in a, in a, a leadership role uh, for, the, for the world. He's still the ruler, or I say the ruler. He, I guess you would call him the head, maybe? I'm not sure what term he uses. 
but anyway, <laughs> he he's the top dog in uh, Tibet, and uh, and he chose not to fight to to teach us all that this is the new way. Instead of using uh, warfare and fighting to get what we want, we're going to use our noggin. <laughs> we're going to use our thoughts. We're going to we're going to talk about it. Let's communicate with each other. Okay. So anyway, so God is but love and therefore so am I. In my defenselessness, my safety lies. My reality lies. My trust in God lies. And when we're weak, then is he strong. God is but love and therefore so am I. I am among the ministers of God. So if uh, the Dalai Lama is a minister of God, so are you. If Jesus is the minister of God, which he is, and so are you. And so we as ministers of God take upon the role of spreading the love. <laughs> okay? God is but love, and therefore so am I. I am among the ministers of God. You're among the ministers of God. Okay, well, let's go look at our uh, text reading for today. And we're, oh, I, I, this is a nice one. I've got so much of it underlined in my book. I need do nothing. The happy realization, maybe it should be called. I need do nothing. And before we read it, there's a lot going on around the world today. Summer solstice brings with it the longest day, daylight appreciation and day, first day of summer, uh, finally summer day, Cuckoo Warning Day, Litha, which is the, the, the pagan holiday, Midsummer also it's called, uh, where, where, you know, in Stonehenge today, they'll have a big, big party because that sun will, will come up. I forget what stone it hits, but it, it's lined up to come right through there and yeah, on the sunrise. And then, it, and then at sunset, I believe it is, on the winter solstice, it, it'll, it'll hit a certain point in Stonehenge and other you know and, and there'd be a lot of different ancestral uh, ancient um, uh, either megaliths or mounds like the Cahokia mounds in uh, on the Mississippi River right there across Missouri into Indiana uh, those things were all set up in alignment with the Sun so you know go spend a night there and watch the Sun come up uh, world peace, and there are a lot of them doing that. I think it's quite a party now, and I'm glad that it is there at uh, Stonehenge. When I call party, I hope it's a sacred party, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, world peace and prayer day. Well, we, we need all the those that we can get, don't, can't we, in this world? Uh, world humanist day, tall girl appreciation day, toad hollow day of thanks, world orgasm day. <laughs> World Productivity Day, uh, Recess at Work Day, Ann and Samantha Day, West Virginia Day, World Refugee De Day, World Tapas Day, Ice Cream Soda Day, Smoothie Day, uh, Kunamana Day, uh, New Identity Day, Plain Yogurt Day, Vanilla Milkshake Day, Dump the pump day. Take a hike with a Greek, a geek. <laughs> Take a hike with a geek or a Greek. It's a geek though. Uh, Seashell sea day. American Eagle day. You know the bald eagle is uh, known. That's the American eagle. The Heliidus leucocephalus. And then International Asteroid Day and Nystagmus Awareness Day. And then, and then uh, on, uh, and you know, solstice will fall on anywhere from like the 19th, 20th, 21st, even the 22nd, maybe even the 23rd, in that range. Usually we call it the 21st, but this year it's on the 20th. And you know, since there's so much going there in Stonehenge, anything, I, I got to look and the word peace comes from the old French, Pax, which comes from the Latin uh, Pax, Passius, passus, pax passus. I think it's where we get the word Pacific, actually. Anyway, so let's use the word, the old English word, which is the old French word, 
which is Pax, which turned into peace in English. Okay, I need do nothing. And of course, let's keep in our mind all day today. God is but love, and therefore so am I. Uh, and it, let's see. Uh, God is but love, and therefore so am I. In my defenselessness, my safety lies. God is but love, and therefore so am I. I am among the ministers of God. God is but love, and therefore so am I. Okay, well, let's go take a look. And, you know, when, when we do this every hour of the day, he's, he's really wanting us to get this idea down that you're a love being. God is but love, and therefore so are we. I need do nothing. Okay. You still have too much faith in the body as a source of strength. You still have too much faith in the body as a source of strength. What plans do you make that do not involve its comfort or protection or enjoyment in some way? This makes, this makes the body an end and not a means in your interpretation. And this always means you still find sin attractive. No one accepts atonement for himself who still accepts sin as his goal. You have thus not met your one responsibility. Atonement is not welcomed by those who prefer, prefer pain and punt destruction. What's your one responsibility? To not have sin as your goal. To not think that uh, guilt will give you anything that you ever want, ever. <laughs> and he even goes, he says that uh, your atonement is not welcomed by those who prefer guilt. And he says in those who prefer pain and destruction. He goes ahead and, what, do, what does guilt cause? What does sin cause? What does the, the care of the body cause? Well, that's what he's saying. That if you're, you're preferring pain and destruction, <laughs> if we really saw that, we wouldn't, we wouldn't think sin so attractive, would we? Paragraph two. There is one thing that you have never done. You have not utterly forgotten the body. It has perhaps faded at times from your sight, but it has not yet completely disappeared. You are not asked to let this happen for more than an instant. Yet it is in this instant that the miracle of atonement happens. Afterwards you will see the body again, but never quite the same. And every instant that you spend without awareness of the body gives you a different view of it when you return to the body. So we want to have that, that moment of res respite from a awareness that we're a body. We're starting to, starting to see ourselves as the eternal, that which cannot die, and see our brothers that way, where there is no sin, where we're all in constant communication. Paragraph 3. At no single instant does the body exist at all. Wow. Now there's a statement. <laughs> in... In no single instant does the body exist at all. It is always remembered or anticipated, but never experienced just now. Only its past and future make it seem real. Time controls it entirely, for sin is never wholly in the present. In any single instant, the attraction of guilt would be experienced as pain, and nothing else, and would be avoided. Catch that? In any single instant, the attraction of guilt would be experienced as pain, and nothing else, and would be avoided. It has no attraction now. Its whole attraction is imaginary, and therefore must be thought of in the past or in the future. You know, I'm, I don't like what was done to me in the past, I don't want it to happen again in the future. So we're all caught up in, and not in the present, where we could just truly really be happy not thinking about sin at all. <laughs> or should I say the word, we should not, not even to even think about guilt. Paragraph four. It is impossible to accept the holy instant without reservation, unless just for an instant, you're willing to see no past or future. You cannot prepare for it without placing it in the future. 
Release has given you the instant you desire it. Many have spent a lifetime in preparation and have indeed achieved their instance of success. This course does not attempt to teach more than they learned in time, but it does aim at saving time. Wow, okay. We're going to save time in this method, huh? And he, he elaborates on how, how they many have spent a lifetime in preparation and have indeed achieved their instance of success. This course does not attempt to teach more than they learned in time, but it does aim at saving time. <laughs> Our older brother, if we think that he's a wise brother, we ought to listen to him and save time. You may be attempting to follow a very long road to the goal you have accepted. It is extremely difficult to reach atonement by fighting against sin. Enormous effort is expended in the attempt to make holy what is hated and despised. Nor is a lifetime of contemplation and long periods of meditation aimed at detachment from the body necessary. Wow, isn't that nice to know? Because a lot of us here in the West don't spend long, how's he say it? A lifetime of contemplation and long periods of meditation aimed at detachment from the body necessary. <laughs> Well, it's nice to know because a lot of us here in the West don't do that. That's what I was trying to say. All such attempts will ultimately succeed because of their purpose. They want to, they want to go beyond the body to their, holy, their holiness. And so it's going to succeed. But look what he says. All such attempts will ultimately succeed because of their purpose. Yet the means are tedious and very time-consuming. For all of them look to the future for release from a state of present unworthiness and inadequacy. Paragraph 5, your way will be different. Okay, so our way will be different. Not in purpose, but in means. A holy relationship is a means of saving time. Wow, we're going we're gonna to turn all of our special relationships into holy relationship. We're going to see that Christ comes to us in every brother and accept them wholeheartedly, completely, and lovingly. And that's what's going to save ourselves, them, and the whole world. Since we can get all of those people that think that there are leaders to realize that, well, we'll have a happy world. Of course, we need to be good, but good examples. That's how we do it. And we need to see our leaders in a way that they're doing perfectly what they're to be doing, too. You know, that's the turning. You'll accept everything wholeheartedly and completely and appreciatively, regardless of where they think, where they're at in, in, uh, in the scope of things. They can't do anything unless it was, unless it was perfectly occurring as uh, what's good for us. Your way will be different, not in purpose, but in means. A holy relationship is a means of saving time. One instant spent together with your brother or your sister restores the universe to both of you. You are prepared. Now you need but to remember you need do nothing. Now you need to remember you need do nothing. It would be far more profitable now merely to concentrate on this than to consider what you should do. When peace comes at last to those who wrestle with temptation and fight against the giving in to sin, when the light comes at last into the mind given to contemplation, or when the goal is finally achieved by anyone, it always comes with just one happy realization. I need do nothing. <laughs> I just love that. When peace comes at last to those who wrestle with temptation and fight against the giving in to sin, when the light comes at last into the mind given to contemplation, or when the goal is finally achieved by anyone, it always comes with just one happy realization. I need do nothing. <laughs> Here is the ultimate, paragraph 6, here is the ultimate release which everyone will one day find in his own way, at his own time. You do not need this time. Time has been saved for you because you and your brother are together. This is the special means this course is using to save you time. 
you're not making use of the course if you insist on using means which have served others well, neglecting what was made for you. Save time for me by only this one preparation and practice doing nothing else. I need do nothing is a statement of allegiance, a truly undivided loyalty. <laughs> so, so you, I mean, you can spend long periods in meditation if you want, and I'm sure you'll benefit by it. You know, that was my path was, you know, I uh, was, was spending a lot of time in meditation. And then I got into the course really studying it more in depth and realized he really wasn't asking us to do that much meditation. He wants us to be consistent throughout the day, every hour. We really wasn't asking too much. And you can certainly spend longer, if you'd like, than, than just a minute or two or five minutes morning and evening or 15 minutes morning and evening. But he doesn't require it. And he, he just, but he, he does want us to see the good in our brothers and tell ourselves this one happy realization. I need do nothing. <laughs> I need do nothing as a statement of allegiance, a truly undivided loyalty. Believe it for just one instant, and you will accomplish more than is given to a century of contemplation or of struggle against temptation. 7. To do anything involves the body, and if you recognize you need do nothing, you have withdrawn the body's value from your mind. Here is the quick and open door through which you slip past centuries of effort and escape from time. <laughs> this is the way in which sin loses all attraction right now. For here is time denied and past and future gone. Who needs do nothing has no need for time. To do nothing is to rest and make a place within you where the activity of the body ceases to demand attention. Into this place the Holy Spirit comes and there abides. He will remain when you forget, and the body's activities return to occupy your conscious mind. Enter into our rest. He talks about that. You know, they, the symbol in the Old Testament was a day of rest. And, in the, and as I understand the New Testament, my way of looking at it is that every day should be a day of rest. And he's explaining this. I need do nothing is a, is a statement of rest. Let your Sabbath be all the time. And the last paragraph, eight, to finish this section. Yet there will always be this place of rest to which you can return. Let's back up. To do nothing is to rest and make a place within you where the activities of the body cease to demand attention. Into this place the Holy Spirit comes and there abides. He will remain when you forget, and the body's activities return to occupy your conscious mind. Yet there will always be this place of rest to which you can return, and you will be more aware of this quiet center of the storm than all its raging activity. This quiet center in which you do nothing... <laughs> will remain with you, giving you rest in the midst of every busy doing on which you are sent. This quiet center in which you do nothing will remain with you, giving you rest in the midst of every busy doing on which you are sent. For from this center you will be directed how to use the body sinlessly. It is this center from which the body is absent that will keep it so in your awareness of it. So when you enter into that, that I do nothing state, that holy instant, you'll, you'll, you'll receive a greater vision. You'll, you'll, see, you'll receive a vision of Christ and you'll know exactly what to use the body for, but you'll realize that it's a tool to be used and that you don't need to do anything. It just kind of like God flows through you <laughs> and you don't have to do a thing. Okay, well, let's close with our song. Be sure to do your, your meditations throughout the day, the small amounts that he's asking. God is but love, and therefore so am I. God is but love, and therefore so am I. 
defenselessness My safety lies In my defenselessness My safety lies God is but love And therefore so am I God is but love And therefore so am I I am among the ministers of God I am among the ministers of God God is but love And therefore so am I So am I In my defenselessness My safety lies In my defenselessness My safety lies In my defenselessness My safety lies In my defenselessness But love and therefore so am I I am among the ministers of God I am among the ministers of God I am among the ministers of God peace out of uh, the old French, which is where the, we got our word for peace in English, which came from Latin, Pax Passus, which is Pax. God is but love, and therefore so am I. In my defenselessness my safety lies. God is but love, and therefore so am I. I and you are among the ministers of God. I am among the ministers of God. Pax. God is but love, and therefore so am I.